This is the Aperture MT Pro. I've had it for two months and it's definitely worth the money. But there's still a reason why I regret buying it. Why is that? The MT Pro is a great light, let me get that out of the way, and I'm not sponsored by Aperture in any way, I bought this light with my own money. Now let's get into what makes this such a fantastic light. This is a 1 foot RGB tube light with 36 programmable pixel zones. With this light you can control 36 different pixel zones independently. That means that if you want a light to beam across an object, all you have to do is select pixel chase mode, and then select your color, and you're good to go. This light has tons of other built-in effects as well though go into at the end of the video, but it also has your ability to make your own effects. This light is also full RGB capable, with RGB, XY, and HSI compatibility, with everything being able to be controlled in 0.1% increments. This means that you can turn intensity, hue, or whatever down to 0.1% if you so choose. Another great thing about this light is its built-in CRMX. What this means is it can wirelessly connect to a DMX transmitter, which is the standard type of receiver that professional gaffers use to control their lights. But if you're not ready for DMX, you can also control this light through Aperture's free app Cytoslink. Aperture is fantastic and super easy to use. My girlfriend who knows nothing about lighting was able to program her own effect on the MT Pro because it's just that intuitive. The other great thing about this app is you can control multiple lights simultaneously. This means if I want to make my MC and my MT Pro the exact same shade of purple, I could do that with the push of a button, especially because I could save that shade to a preset function on my phone. I could go on and on about Cytosling, but it's also constantly updating, so if you really want to know what the newest and greatest features are, I would recommend looking up a dedicated video about Cytosling. What I will say is Cytosling is so useful that I've decided that every RGB light I purchase from now on will be from Aperture, just to make sure it has compatibility with this fantastic app. I'm serious, sometimes I'll go on Cytosling just to play around and see what new features my lights have that I didn't even know about already. Now let's talk about what this light comes with. First of all, you get an amazing carrying case. It's this sort of hard soft case that I absolutely adore. It's hard enough that you know it'll protect your light, but soft enough so that you know it won't damage anything when you put it in with a larger case. Opening this case, you'll be greeted with a light, a floor stand, a grid, and a charging cable. Now before we talk about anything, we need to talk about this charging cable. It's so good I wish they sold it separately. It's got these nice metal ends, and the cord is threaded with this fabric that makes it super hard to tangle and also really sturdy. Aperture, sell these cables separately, I will buy them. Okay, moving on from the cable, you also get a floor stand that is equally high quality. I'm actually using it to hold up my Aperture MC right now. This stand can hold a surprising amount of weight and also has one of the best ball head designs I've ever seen. All you have to do is twist this ring like a millimeter to lock and unlock it, which means you can adjust the ball head with just one hand. All you need is two fingers to adjust the locking mechanism and the rest of your hand can be used to adjust the ball head. Also the base of the stand is rubber, so you won't be scratching your floor or anything you put the stand onto. Before we get to the light though, we actually need to move up and look at the grid. This grid is super high quality and easy to use. If you don't know, a grid's purpose is to reduce the beam angle of a light, so it doesn't spill everywhere and is instead more concentrated. This grid works amazingly well, and I actually find myself using it pretty often, so I'm glad they threw it in. I don't have much else to say about the grid because I don't use any other grids, but to me, it seems pretty high quality. Finally, we get to the light. Picking up this light, you'll notice it has a nice weight to it. Holding this in your hand just makes you feel like you're holding a piece of high quality equipment. I'm confident that if I drop it on concrete, it would be fine. That's partially because I dropped it on concrete once and it wasn't even scratched. It has two quarter 20 mounting threads, so you can mount it pretty much anywhere. But if that's not enough, it also has two magnets on the back that are super high quality and make it really easy to mount it in places where you can't fit a light stand. This, combined with the fact that it's so small, means you can hide this light pretty much anywhere. I fit in this light behind people, behind chair legs. I once had a guy lay on the ground below the camera and just move the light as my subject moved. Now the magnets are super strong, but the light's also pretty heavy. So if you try mounting it vertically, it may slide down depending on the surface. Another thing to note about the magnets is that the grid actually covers them. Many people have pointed this out, but in my experience, it's not really an issue because the magnets are strong enough to go through the grid. Some other small things about this light that I still think are pretty nice are that it supports PD fast charging. This means if it runs out of battery on a shoot, you could just plug it into a portable charger and you're good to go. Another great thing about the battery is that when charging it, it actually tells you the percentage that's been charged. This is something I feel like should be the industry standard, but for some reason isn't. Also, when the light's turned on, it gives you an approximate amount of time left that you can keep using it. There are a couple bad things about this light though that I felt like I should mention before I move on to the big one that made me really regret buying it. These are a bit nitpicky though, so take them as you will. Number one, it doesn't have the best battery life at only two hours. This isn't really the biggest issue ever though, because you could just plug it into a portable charger, so I've never really had an issue with it running out of battery. The other negative is that if you want to control this light, you kind of have to use the phone app. Because you can control it in 0.1% increments, using that tiny little scroll it takes forever to fine tune it to whatever your desired intensity, hue, or whatever is. So I always just end up pulling out my phone and doing it that way. 
that's pretty much it for the negatives though. It's a pretty great light. I mean, I could go on and on about how high quality it is. Even the, the handle on the case, it just feels premium. Everything about this light feels premium. Now I'm going to read some specs off of Aperture's website because I don't have a Sikonic so I can't measure this stuff myself, but I felt like you should know anyway. When measured at 1 meter at 5600 Kelvin, this light has a lux rating of 159 and a color temperature range of 2000 to 10,000. This light has a CRI rating of 95, a TLCI rating of 98, and a CQS rating of 96. Okay, now let's talk about the effects. I'm only going to mention two of them right now and save the rest for the end of the video because there's only really two that I care about. The first effect that I really like is the pixel fire effect. This is a really useful effect because it allows you to create a more organic looking fire than with an Aperture MC. With the Aperture MC and most other lights, it'll just blink orange and red at varying degrees to make it look like fire. But with the MT Pro, it actually uses the pixels to blink randomly so that it creates a more organic flickering effect. The other effect I really like is the color chase. This is great for product shots. As you saw earlier in the video, it made it look like I had a light move across an object when in reality, I just held the MT Pro up in the air. Now, I'm going to run a quick lighting test to see how this works as a key light. I'm going to move my MT Pro from the background to where my key light is and turn all my other lights off. I have my aperture set to 1.7, my ISO set to 100, and my shutter speed at 50, and this is the current exposure. Let's see how this looks with just the MT Pro. Okay, so I have the MT Pro set at max power at 4000 Kelvin, about an arm's length away from me. I can actually touch it from here. And this is about how bright it is with the current exposure. I'm going to turn on my other lights, other than my key light, and just see how it looks. As you can see, it's not that great of a lighting setup, so I'm going to put my MT Pro back where I normally have it and turn my key light back on. Like I just said, this doesn't really work as a key light, and that's the main reason I regret buying it. I'm a film student, I'm just getting started collecting gear, and so when I saw the Aperture MT Pro came out, I thought it looked like so much fun and I wanted to jump on it, but really it's not what I needed yet. Right now, I'm using a $40 key light that I bought off Amazon. It's not very soft or bright. If you're a filmmaker just starting out and you have $200 to spend, don't buy the MT Pro. It may sound like tons of fun, because it is, but it's just not the right purchase for you yet. Wait a bit and maybe buy it or buy an Infinity Bar, which I don't have, but just kind of seems like an MT Pro, but better. Aside from detailing the effects, that's all for my video. Sorry for the clickbait, I just wanted to warn starting filmmakers like me from making the same mistake. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to subscribe. I'm very new at this whole YouTube thing, so it'd be a huge help. Click here to watch my video on how to make connections at film school effectively. It's only a couple minutes long, so I'd really appreciate your viewership. That's all for now, see you next week, and as always, thanks for watching. Okay. Now we're going to cover the effects this light has. This part isn't going to be scripted or anything, and I'm only going to cover the pixel effects because otherwise we'd be here all day. So first off, you have Color Fade. Um, I don't know how to explain this other than just by using its name and showing you. So this is with four colors. Let me turn the intensity down. This is with four colors. Um... You can select whatever color you want, and you can have it be two colors, one color. I'm pretty sure the max is four, though. Um, it just has it fade. Ooh. It just has the color fade till it fills up the thing. Then the next color comes in, and then the next color. I honestly don't know what use I would use this for. Maybe for a music video. Definitely, definitely for a music video. The next effect is called color cycle. It does this. You could select the four colors again. It could be two colors. It doesn't have to be four, but it just it has them cycle at a stepped system. I kind of already explained this, but this is the one pixel chase. As you can see, the light moves across. You can adjust the speed. You can adjust the color of the light and the intensity. I have all of these set to 1% intensity. Here's what the two pixel chase looks like. As you can see, one of the pixels is green. One of them is blue. They're right next to each other. You can have them be the same color, yada, yada, yada. Here's the three pixel chase, same thing, it's colors. And then finally we have the rainbow effect. Ooh, this is the one that makes everyone freak out when they, I first show them the light. Um, mostly because it does this effect whenever you boot up the light. Here's the pixel fire. You have the vertical and also there is horizontal. Um, I find that the horizontal doesn't really work that well, though, and, like, that doesn't look like a fire's hitting me, you know? I The vertical's just a lot better. And that's pretty much it for the effects. If you stuck around this long, uh, please subscribe. This is what I'm, like, unscripted, so you can imagine just how good I am when I script myself. I mean, I don't know, maybe leave in the comments, should I, should I not script my videos? Am I better unscripted? Who knows? 
Maybe this is more engaging. Maybe I'm more personable. Let me know. I'm twisting in my chair a bunch, though. I think this would nauseate some people. Because I'd be jump cutting. Ugh. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, see you next week.